Mr. Miyamoto? Yes. And welcome. Today I intend to talk about the Pikmin, but lately I've had this strange sense that maybe Pikmin really are all around me. Do you see any around you? <laughs> Perhaps under your seat. <laughs> no. <laughs> You probably won't find them, even if you look. <laughs> well, as usual, I'd like to ask Bill's help in allowing me to in speak in Japanese. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Obey the captain. It has already been six years since we launched Wii, hasn't it? The following year, we started thinking about what we should do with our next hardware system, and we quickly arrived to one conclusion. In order for it to be a complete entertainment device, central to the living room, it could not be dependent upon the television. Because for more than 30 years, Game machines have had to be connected to the TV. They could never take on a more important role than the television itself. When someone else is watching TV, you can't access the game system. And you can't see the game screen without waiting for the TV to power on. We decided that our next system was going to have its own dedicated screen, even if it had to be small. And that we wanted to make that the first screen people go to when they enter the living room. And that was the start of Wii U. This is Wii U. With the Wii U gamepad, we have the first dedicated personal screen in the long history of video games. This independent screen changes the importance of gaming machines, which have always relied on the TV screen. With this controller in your hands, you can, of course, quickly turn on a game. And it builds on our long experience of designing games that connect a portable gaming machine with a home console. And it makes unique new ways to play using two screens a possibility. There will be no need to wait to power on your TV to weigh yourself in Wii Fit. And because you can use the subscreen simultaneously with while well, someone else is doing something on the TV, it will change how you watch television in the living room. Now, as we were developing this new system, Wii U, I thought I definitely want to create the next Pikmin on this new hardware. So allow me to introduce the next Pikmin to you. This is the new Pikmin. It has already been 10 years since we created the first Pikmin for Nintendo GameCube. Now, Pikmin is a real-time action management game in which you command the Pikmin to perform a variety of tasks. And while the gameplay involves managing your swarm of 100 Pikmin, it is a game that shows the movement, movements of each Pikmin individually. They're very cute and adorable. And this is why we puzzled over how far away to position the, pam the camera in the GameCube game. If it's too far away, you can't see the Pikmin, and if it's too close, you can't see the full map. The enhanced resolution of the Wii U has solved this puzzle for us. Now you can see the tiny movements of each Pikmin, and you can see that the, the natural setting is much more beautiful now as well. 
And the way they break the walls here, it's also more realistic. Now in Pikmin 3, the Pikmin will find materials that they can use to build bridges. If you look, the way that they carry each little object makes them seem more like real ants. Now let me show you a new Pikmin type. These are the new rock Pikmin. You can use them to break hard objects. And with Motion Plus technology, you can aim at specific targets, offering deeper strategy. Now, the basic controls use the Wii Remote Plus and Nunchuck. You can aim precisely, you can switch between Pikmin, pipe, Pikmin types, it's very smooth. So these simple and intuitive controls make it possible to target and throw Pikmin at enemy eyes or shells, and it adds more strategic depth when battling. And shaking the nunchuck to charge is a lot of fun. Now, fans who have played the series before will, have, will quickly see how nice these new controls have become. Now, on the Wii U gamepad, you will always see an overall map. So in Pikmin, the most important gameplay element is how efficiently you are able to manage and assign tasks to your Pikmin within the limited time frame. This strategic element gets even di deeper as you are able to touch the map, scroll quickly over the environment, and more effectively place your Pikmin. So it's gotten, the, the strategy is much deeper now. Now, of course, you can also control the game using only the Wii U gamepad. And this style is much better suited to using the map more effectively. This also makes the game deeper on a tactical level because we've added additional leaders to help you break up your tasks. This time you can control up to four leaders. So that, help, that makes uh, controlling these deeper, uh, gives you further enhanced strategy on the map. And these are the four of them. And you may notice that Captain Olimar is not among them. Uh, the reason for that is a secret. <laughs> so here, you see one leader throwing another to a separate spot where he can perform tasks. And with the Wii U gamepad, you can quickly check the status of all four leaders at one glance. So this is a must-have feature for switching between leaders and coordinating your strategies. So here at the show, you'll be able to try one of several modes in the game, the challenge mode. Now, this mode challenges you to collect as much fruit as you can within the time limit. And this is the mode that has some of the deepest strategic options. When you're done, you can watch a, a playthrough, a re, uh, you can watch a, record, a record of your playthrough on the TV screen and use that as a reference for a second time through. Now, we're developing Pikmin 3 with the belief that we can help people once again understand the kind of fun deeper games can offer. And in this era, when consumers are said to be moving toward lighter games, I think this is an important challenge for all of us. So, do you understand Pikmin 3 for Wii U a little bit better? <laughs> it's an all-new Pikmin game with a... It's an all-new Pikmin game, with more detailed portrayal of the Pikmin thanks to the improved resolution of the hardware, and greatly enhanced gameplay thanks to the unique new controls. And I certainly hope you will all try it out on the show floor. And maybe, as you play, you'll start to see Pikmin all around you, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Deji san. I feel just like a purple Pikmin. Thank you, Mr. Miyamoto and Bill. And a hello and welcome to all of you here today at the Nokia Theater, and to many more who are watching online at e3.nintendo.com, and also on Spike TV and MTV2. We started off at the top today showing you a game because that's what's most important about this presentation. It's all about the games. In all, 
in one form or another, you'll see 23 Wii U titles on stage today. And that's a lot to squeeze into for just an hour. And even then, that's only a small part of the range of Wii U and Nintendo 3DS titles playable here in LA this week. And that doesn't leave much time to talk about Wii U itself, the new hardware console, and how the integrated second screen on the new controller manufactures new experiences. In other words, less time to consider what Wii U means to both gamers and non-gamers and how it can change your life. And understanding this is vital. Here's why. At its core, Wii U does three different things. It changes your gaming. It changes how you interact with your gaming friends. And it changes the way you enjoy your TV. It's not just intuitive, not just accessible to everyone, but it stands to revolutionize your living room. Does that mean Netflix and Hulu? Yes. And YouTube? Yes. And Amazon Video? Of course. But it's how you enjoy that content and more that will make it truly unique. We know that's a strong assertion. But the proof points are going to have to wait for another day. There's no way we could explain it all this week. So here at E3, we'll focus only on the new form of gaming and the new ways to connect with your friends. And then, in the near future, we'll show you how Wii U will integrate and elevate your living room entertainment. Now, that still leaves a lot to cover in just a few days. And what happens on stage here is just a small part of what we're calling Nintendo All Access at E3, a name you'll want to remember. Because to fully appreciate Wii U, you're going to have to devote more time, and we really hope you do that, at e3.nintendo.com. That brings a lot more information, assets, and an insider's look at our E3 activities on our social media channels. So be sure to check out Nintendo, Wii U, and Nintendo 3DS Facebook fan pages, the Nintendo YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter with the at Nintendo America Twitter handle. Now, as some of you are already aware, the news flow actually began Sunday night when we posted a Nintendo Direct hosted by Mr. Iwata. It demonstrates how Wii U can not only open up new forms of gaming, but also act as a unique social window, connecting you to your gaming friends with a game-based experience. The key that unlocks it all, of course, is the new controller, the Wii U gamepad. And this week, you'll begin to understand the new disruption called asymmetric gameplay. This means putting one player with the gamepad in a solitary role, competing differently, maybe even winning in a different way, pitting just you against everyone else. And I'm happy to announce, just like the original Nintendo Entertainment System, the Wii U hardware will support two separate gamepads. Now, this week we're focusing on single gamepad challenges, but look for dual gamepad experiences in the future. Right now, we'd like to make a proper introduction to the Wii U gamepad itself. So let's start with a quick guided tour. The Wii U gamepad offers simple and intuitive control. The touchscreen works with your fingertip, or more precisely, with the included stylus. There's the familiar plus control pad and A, B, X, and Y buttons. 
games featuring a deeper, more immersive experience will frequently employ the left and right analog sticks. Each has a button underneath, which is activated by pressing down on the stick. On the back side of the controller are trigger-like ZL and ZR buttons. They sit comfortably under the index fingers when holding the gamepad, acting as de facto triggers in many shooting games. The L and R buttons are on the shoulders, and between them is the infrared transceiver. Motion control using the accelerometer and gyroscope is built into the gamepad, as is a rumble feature. The built-in camera and microphone will be used for a variety of software applications, including voice and video chat. There are stereo speakers, a headphone jack and volume control that can adjust sound on the gamepad or on your full screen TV. Finally, the home button. It can suspend a game to check for updates or connect with your friends. So that's a quick guide to how you'll manipulate your experiences. Now let's take a look at where those experiences begin. In his Nintendo Direct over the weekend, Mr. Awada unveiled what you'll know as Miiverse. It's how you interact with your gaming friends. And this is the first thing you'll see on your TV screen when you turn on the system. You might think of it as Main Street, a place where people congregate, creating constant commotion. Your own me is joined by others who play on your home system. Here too are your game friends, as well as people you've already met from around the world, and also many newcomers. You'll also notice that those me's are gathering around individual tiles. You might think of them as billboards on that main street. They represent both your personal tastes and the entertainment that's trending globally on Wii U. And those me's don't just congregate, they communicate. Each is equipped with a wide range of rich media engagement for socializing and providing information. The first comes in the form of speech bubbles. You can see or send simple text messages, or you can use the stylus to write your own words and even draw your own illustrations, a lot like Swapnote. You can even share a screen image from the game you're currently playing. These interactions can also display recent activity and recent scores. You've even got the option to display facial expressions within the bubble that reflects your current state of mind. And because this form of interaction is browser-based, while this may not be available right on launch day, you'll eventually be able to join Miiverse from your Nintendo 3DS, your PC, or from any smartphone or web-enabled mobile device. When Miiverse is integrated into your gameplay, new breakthroughs happen. So let's get to an example of this new dynamic demonstrated by an old friend. Every time a new Nintendo home console is announced, we start hearing familiar feedback from long-term fans. Sounds great, but you've got to have a Mario game. And frequently, those requests are framed like this. I want it to be just like Mario's always been, but I want it to be better. Well, that may seem contradictory, but Miiverse will help meet those dual desires. In new Super Mario Brothers U, not only will you be able to see what others are saying when the Miis gather around the Wii U Main Street, but you'll also be able to connect right within the game. Friends, family, or any other player might be talking about the overall game experience, about specific levels, about hidden areas, or difficult jumps. And you could probably expect that one of your buddies will be bragging about his high score. That's probably gonna be me. Or their record time. 
It's a new real-time social window that opens up right as you're playing. We'll be talking more about these Meverse features tonight in our Developers Roundtable. But for now, let's take a look at the game itself. Here's New Super Mario Brothers U. Oh yeah, Mario time. As you may already know, this Mario game can be transferred to the, from the big screen to play personally on your gamepad. But you may also notice something else, what we're calling boost mode. With up to four people using their Wii remotes to race through the course, one more with the gamepad can use the touch screen to helpfully place blocks along the way or you and a friend can work together to set a new standard for a speed run. Currently, the benefits of Wii U will be evident with Nintendo published titles, but also just as clearly with games coming from our third party partners. Even for franchises you already recognize in non-Wii U form. We're going to spend some time this morning looking at several third party Wii U titles. Mr. Reggie, we all know you're the man around here, but why don't you let me handle this? After all, I've always had a thing for extreme personalities, and here's one of the most extreme, Mr. Martin Tremblay, president of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. Take it away, Marty baby! Thank you, Miss Martin, welcome. It's great to have you here, and I, I think it's good to have Harley here. I'm still not so sure. And also a unique version of Batman Arkham City. Thanks, Reggie. But don't be put off by Harley. You know how she is. It is a wonderful time in the state of the industry to have an exciting new platform. And it's our pleasure to work with Nintendo so closely on the launch of the Wii U. And yes, with the Wii U, you're going to start experiencing Batman Arkham City in a new special way. Well, it's fantastic. It's great. We can't wait. So please, have at it. The Batman Arkham franchise is one of the most important pillars of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. And we are thrilled with its critical right, and commercial success. Today, we are unveiling Batman Arkham City Armored Edition, a must-have, unique experience on the Wii U. It is my pleasure to introduce Sefton Hill of Rocksteady Studio, in our ex who shares in our excitement for the franchise to come to the Wii U. Hill, game director of Batman Arkham City, and on behalf of everyone here at Rocksteady Studios, we're extremely excited to have Arkham City come to the Wii U. As you're about to see, the gameplay has been expanded with some awesome new features designed specifically for this new console. In addition, you will find the armored versions of both Batman and Catwoman fully playable and exclusive on the Wii U. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Reed Schneider of, from WB Games Montreal, our studio responsible for the Wii U version of the game. Reed's going to walk you through some of the game's specific features. Let's go, Reed. Thank you, Martin, and thanks to Sefton for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm here today to give you a brief glimpse at Batman Arkham City Armored Edition and how the Wii U gamepad will revolutionize how you play the game. 
A new feature exclusive to the Wii U version is the BAT mode. During combat, Batman's all new armored suit will extract kinetic energy and soon the BAT meter will fill up until it maxes out. Once the max is reached, players can use the Wii U gamepad to activate BAT mode, making Batman even more powerful and able to dole out more damage. Here, players are faced with a new challenge, a switch that needs to be activated using the newly designed remote control batarang. After selecting the batarang from the gadget menu and launching it at the switch, players will be able to use the Wii U gamepad to guide it with an unprecedented amount of accuracy. And finally, faced with a room full of enemies, even the odds by strategically placing explosive gel throughout the corridor walls. Now, with the explosive set, it's just a matter of time for waiting for the perfect time to attack. With the enemies in place, use the Wii U gamepad to set explosives off one at a time or all at once. To survive Arkham City, you'll need to use stealth, gadgets, and blunt force. And with the Wii U gamepad, you'll have access to Batman's entire arsenal at the touch of a finger. The most immersive Batman experience has arrived. Thanks, Reed. Thank you, Martin, and thanks to the team. <laughs> and thank you to the team in Montreal and Burbank for all their hard work. At Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, we work to create a slate of games that has something for every type of player. Another of our key franchises is Scribble Knots, which appeals to all audiences, proven as the games have sold more than 4 million units worldwide. Please allow me to introduce Jeremiah Slaska of Fifth Cell Studio to present Scribble Knots Unlimited for the Wii U. Thanks, Martin. At Fifth Cell, we love hearing from Scribblenauts fans around the world that the game gave them an experience unlike anything else. Players could write any word, and it would be instantly brought to life. Scribblenauts truly let players' imaginations run wild. Super Scribblenauts went even wilder by expanding on that co original concept and throwing adjectives into the mix. Now, we're bringing the definitive Scribblenauts experience for the first time ever to the Wii U home console. This game has unlimited possibilities for players to explore, create, and share. Fissel is very pleased to present Scribble Knots Unlimited. The best selling award winning game is back. Welcome to Scribble Knots Unlimited, a world where you can imagine anything and explore everything. Venture out on continuous and unbound exploration, now in high definition on the Wii U. Create any object you can think of and bring it to life. Once you've created it, share your creations with friends. And now with an all new multiplayer mode, the fun is endless. And finally learn the tale behind Maxwell's magical notebook. Help Maxwell by using the most powerful tool in his world, your imagination. Scribble Knots Unlimited. Imagine anything, explore everything. Thanks to you and the team for joining us up here on stage and bringing along those terrific titles. I'm sure everyone is looking forward to getting their hands on both. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. And have a great each week, everyone. Thank you. What Martin and Mr. Miyamoto have shown so far is just the start of what's in store for Wii U owners. Let's take a look at more of what's on the way.
Adventures featuring Batman and Mario may be eternal, but new forms of gaming emerge all the time. In this current generation of home systems, the music and fitness genres came into their own. Wii U will make both of these even better. Five years ago, I stepped up on stage here at E3 and stepped onto something that looked a lot like a plastic bathroom scale. And even though I was focused on beating Mr. Miyamoto, I heard some of you laughing. Don't try to deny it, I heard you. Yes, my body was ready. And what was just one small step for me was one giant step for expanding the universe of video games. We Fit and We Fit Plus with the balance board led millions of people into video games for the first time. To date, more than 43 million copies of We Fit and We Fit Plus have been sold around the world. The Wii Balance Board introduced a sophisticated way to measure body control. And now, We Fit U adds another valuable peripheral. This week at E3, we're focusing on the new activities inside We Fit U but it will also deliver new actions that will leave you happier, livelier, and quite frankly, sweatier. Here's a first look at We Fit You. Pretty good workout, huh? Oh, seriously, my quads got to run for their money. Think you're ready for another round? Bring it on, what's next? this morning. You just need a few more rounds. <laughs> New events, new exercise routines, and that new fit meter, and off TV play, they all make the We Fit phenomenon original all over again. Over the past several years, game designers mined a rich new bed of content based on music and the universal appeal of performing music. Showing off your dance moves, shouting into a microphone, it proved that almost everyone wants to be a rock star. But in most cases, there was a clear dividing line between being on stage and just looking on. One person acting and everyone else watching. Wii U owners will find a different approach with Sing. It's the performance game where everyone plays. When we set out to make Sing, we wanted to set out making something really interesting and really new for that new console. And having that additional screen meant we could do something quite fun. And it would kind of change that social dynamic in the living room.
Sing is definitely a game you're going to want in your collection. You're going to want to play this with your friends and your family, and it's definitely going to help create a bit of a party vibe. We told you that today's presentation was all about Wii U games. But we don't intend to entirely ignore the millions of Nintendo 3DS fans. So with 3DS News, please welcome NOA's Executive Vice President of Sales and Marketing, Scott Moffitt. So Scott, we've carved out a few moments uh, for you to do your 3DS thing here on stage. Have at it. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Reggie. A couple of minutes? Where's the love? <laughs> let's, let's face it. You and I know a couple of minutes isn't nearly enough to say all the things I need to say about Nintendo 3DS. So it's a good thing I have my own show just for 3DS fans, and it's already set. Live tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific, a full hour devoted just to new Nintendo 3DS games. First party and third party. It'll be webcast live at e3.nintendo.com as well as on our Facebook fan pages. And you're all invited, of course, to follow the action online. But that doesn't mean we can't have a little fun here. So we'll start with three Nintendo first party titles. And I'll begin with one that was announced recently, an entirely new 2D Super Mario for 3DS. It's clearly different from the new Wii U Mario game that Reggie talked about earlier. What you can't help but notice is that this Mario is all about the gold. Even Mario himself. Gold coins are everywhere, every time you turn around. And you'll even be able to generate more of them just by what you do within the game. In a year like this, when everyone will be going for the gold, it's gonna be hard to beat Mario. So I won't try to explain all the depth to this great game here today. But I will during our 3DS event tomorrow. So I hope you'll all tune in then. But I do want to announce that New Super Mario Bros. 2 will be available here in the US on August 19th. Now, Mario has always been one of the most beloved and recognized characters in video games. But about a decade ago, players began to see him in a slightly different way. The reason was the arrival of Paper Mario, a game that added a role-playing element to the action, and a Mario who seemed like he was built with nothing more than a paintbrush and a pair of scissors. Now, Paper Mario himself is evolving, not only due to 3D, but also because of a simple but strategic new element, stickers. The game environments still seem like shoebox dioramas, but this all new Paper Mario world is plastered with innocent looking stickers. But they're not just for display. You'll collect them by pulling them off the scenery and they become your battle commands. Choose a shoe sticker to stomp on an enemy or a hammer sticker to whack away. They can also help reveal new ways to escape danger in the game or to find secret places as well as hidden items. This Paper Mario retains all the fun of the originals, but with even more game depth. So Paper Mario Sticker Star arrives both, phys both physically and digitally this holiday season. So we've been talking a lot about Mario. In fact, it's enough to make a little brother not named Mario feel just a little bit left out. And I think you know who I'm talking about. What, what Nintendo 3DS doesn't have enough of yet, and what it's about to get a healthy dose of, 
is Luigi. Yes, the little brother is back, and he's more spooked than ever. And why not? First of all, he now needs to travel through multiple mansions, each with its own mission-based challenges. The going will be tougher due to, even new, due to new puzzles and an even heavier emphasis on ghost-catching action. And of course, just Luigi's luck, there are even new kinds of ghosts. And you won't be able to beat them unless you devise just the right capture strategies. Now this whole adventure becomes even eerier in 3D. So all the ghost, catch, ghost hunting action begins at launch this holiday season. So that's a very quick look at three Nintendo titles. We'll be talking about more live online tomorrow. And we will also be giving several third-party titles the spotlight they deserve. So be sure to join us at e3.nintendo.com. And because somebody decided I could only have a little bit of time here with you today, I can't even start to detail the tremendous slate of third-party games also coming to Nintendo 3DS. But I can promise you this. Tune in tomorrow, and there's a lot more to see and hear. So before I turn it back over to Reggie, let's just take a quick peek at some of the third-party lineup. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Last year, we told you that LEGO City would come to Wii U. And it will do so in an open world, employing the Wii U gamepad as a multi-purpose crime-fighting tool. And it's the key to both exploration and competing missions. Take a look. Hey, you like Lego City? You should come check this out. Chase. Chase McCain. Chase McCain? You're a legend!
We're also happy to announce that an exclusive portable version of LEGO City Undercover is also in the works. With a unique storyline, new missions, much more content. It's the same great franchise, but a different game. And of course, the only place it could happen in full glasses-free 3D is on the Nintendo 3DS. Our goal with Wii U this year, as it was with Wii six years ago, is to provide new and engrossing game experiences for every type of player, from the hardest of the core to the newest of the newbies. Among our third-party publishers, probably none has adopted the something-for-everyone approach as thoroughly as Ubisoft. And that's obvious with what they've got cooking for Wii U. So to do the explaining, please welcome Eve Gimo, CEO of Ubisoft. Hello, Richard. Hello, Eve. You're well. Yes, very well. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Let me say I'm really honored to be here today. So. Uh, you know, I understand you've brought some games with you. Please tell us some more. How do you feel about the Wii U? You know, for decades, Nintendo has successfully brought millions of new players to the gaming industry. Um, the new Wii U console is an important innovation that will continue this great legacy and inspire many more people to discover the fun of video games. Designed to be connected, the Wii U gamepad as an intuitive touch interface, making social gaming simple and welcoming. So further, the gamers like, the games, in games like, sorry, Zombie U, Rayman uh, Legend, um, players playing the same game can interact with different content across two different screens. Working together or challenging each other they will be taking part in the first ever truly asymmetric gameplay. So what do I think about the console? It's accessible, it's social, it's very innovative, so it's a revolution. And the thing I wanted to say today is, coming from our creators in Ubisoft, is thank you. Wow, those are, uh, those are fantastic words. Thank you very much. And you've brought some games for us to play today. Yes, we did, and uh, I would like to ask Xavier to, to come and show you all the games we have. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Yves. Thank you, Yves. Thank you, Xavier. Reggie, please don't go anywhere, and don't worry, I promise I won't make you dance. That's, well, that's about the only thing I've not done on this stage. <laughs> so, Reggie, now you're going to become the ultimate puppet master. Let's start. Great. The puppet master, I like the sound of that. So, first, let me get your Judge Dance crew in here. Dancers, please. So, in Judge Dance 4, you have the ability to change the choreography in real time, choosing from the hottest moves from all the Judge Dance games. So when you see four dancers on the screen, then select the move you want them to perform. The Indian whip, yeah. And then it goes on the main screen. What about text? Some shuffling, Reggie, yeah. Then the dancer will perform the shuffling move. Good. Oh, the Rasputin, you're very mean, Reggie. It's very That's hard me, to perform. That's me, I'm very mean. It's very hard to perform. What's next? Girly move, yes, some girly move. Be prepared. There is a Superman there. Do you, you, you play the Superman. Good idea. I did a little power snap. <laughs> so next, it will be interesting. You will have to perform a striker pose. That's a new thing we put in the Wii U. You select the pose you want the dancer to perform, and they need to stay like this forever. Uh, who's doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. As long as you finish, yes, then you reward one of the players. There you go. Thank you. That was great. Thank you, dancers. Thanks, dancers. Thank you. So, Reggie, 
How did you like being the puppet master? Being the puppet master, it's kind of like running Nintendo of America. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are plenty of other very interesting features that you will be able to discover in JSON 4 on our booth. So please come. So now that we've seen what Ubisoft can bring to family fun thanks to the Wii U, let's see what we've cooked up for more hardcore gamers with our new IP, Zombie U. In this game, Reggie, one bite and you're dead. <laughs> but thanks, Willie, the gamepad is your all-in-one survival kit. Let's show a video. If you think you're up to the challenge, please come to our booth and see how long you can survive this zombie apocalypse. Before we leave, Reggie, one last thing. Backstage, I was told by your marketing team that you are the perfect person to help me demonstrate this last feature. Place the camera in front of your face and... Oh. I think you've been zombified. <laughs> Looking good, Reggie. Looking very good. <laughs> Ah, oh, I like French food. But before these go things get out of hand, let me leave you with this last video highlighting Ubisoft's lineup for the Wii U. I'm hungry now. You scare me, Reggie. <laughs> oh, I'm You're coming to me. eat I'm, you. I'm scared. <laughs> This year, Nintendo All Access will also provide you with exclusive content online, including key developer interviews, newly announced game trailers for the Wii U, and daily updates from the Nintendo booth on the E3 convention floor. It's as close as you can get without actually being here, with programs you won't see anywhere else. Welcome to Nintendo Land. If almost all the classic Nintendo franchises came together in a virtual theme park, and if that theme park became a way to start demonstrating the gaming magic of the Wii U gamepad, well, that would be Nintendo Land. When the Wii first arrived, it took Wii Sports Tennis to explain the underlying appeal. When you played it, for the first time, you got it. For Wii U, Nintendo Land does the same thing. Play it, and you begin to understand. 
With it, the integrated second screen takes on fuller meaning. And the person who understands this better than anyone is the driving force behind three important Nintendo properties. Animal Crossing, Wii Sports, and Wii Sports Resort. And he's also the Wii U software producer, Mr. Katsuya Iguchi. So please welcome him along with Jonathan Yeckley of Nintendo's Treehouse. Hello. As Reggie described, Nintendo Land gathers attractions based on many of our most popular franchises into a Nintendo theme park. These attractions borrow atmosphere, the character of the original titles, and rearrange them into completely new types of play. Your Me visits the theme park, and your Me will change into a new costume for each attraction. You will enjoy that attraction as a character in that world. That's Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land is a single game that brings together 12 different attractions. For those visiting E3, we have five of those 12 attractions for you to try. Among these five, The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest, Animal Crossing Sweet Day, and Luigi's Ghost Mansion are multiplayer attractions that there is no mistaking get everyone excited. We will also show the single-player attraction Donkey Kong's Crash Course and Takamaru's Ninja Castle. In Takamaru's Ninja Castle, you'll use the Wii U gamepad to hit targets with throwing stars. And it may be familiar to those of you who saw last year's E3 concept video. I hope you will try it on the show floor to see how it has progressed. Well, there were three objectives that I set before starting the construction of Nintendo Land. The first was to create unprecedented new forms of multiplayer gameplay by taking advantage of the Wii U gamepad. Second, since we were creating a theme park, I also wanted people to enjoy it to the fullest, whether visiting with friends and family or playing competitively by themselves. And finally, I wanted Nintendo Land to be a place visitors from all around the world could gather. And I want the visitors to really sense that. What will make this a reality is Miiverse, our effort to unite living rooms and people playing games all around the world. As for what role Miiverse will fulfill in Nintendo Land, I'd like to talk about that in detail during tonight's developers' roundtable. And those of you watching online on Nintendo All Access, you may have a chance to see what it will look like. Now, let me explain how the first two objectives I mentioned are met in Nintendo Land. First, what kind of new multiplayer experiences will be possible when one player with the Wii U gamepad joins a group of players who are playing with Wii remotes? Clearly, the player with the Wii U gamepad takes on a special role, playing in the same game world as the other players, but from a different perspective, with different information and in a completely different world. This makes asymmetric gameplay possible. To offer an example, I'd like to demonstrate one of the attractions we'll have on the show floor, Luigi's Ghost Mansion. Have you ever walked nervously down the corridors of a haunted house only to suddenly feel something behind you and quickly turn around? This is what you'll feel in multiplayer Luigi's Mansion. This attraction, much like in a horror film, features a stronger ghost chasing a group of weaker players who better work together or else. 
Wii U gamepad で Ghost をやってるプレイヤーも、Both the Ghost player using the Wii U gamepad screen and his pursuers are viewing, and his pursuers viewing the TV are seeing the same floor of the mansion, but what they're sensing is entirely different. If you look closely at the center screen, which represents the big TV, compared to the side screens showing the gamepad view, you'll, you'll soon notice that they're quite different. The gamepad ghost can see all the players all the time, but the other players cannot see the ghost. In the four corners, you see the human players, and in the center is the ghost. Now look at the main screen. The ghost is not here. The people playing on the main screen cannot see the ghost. Fighting against an enemy you can't see seems like a truly one-sided advantage. But the Wii remotes rumble when the ghost gets near. So if the teammates don't cooperate by talking to each other when the ghost is near, they won't be able to track it down. Their objective is to shine their flashlights on the ghost to damage the ghost until they defeat it. But if they leave their lights on too long, their batteries will run out. When the flashlight beam hits the ghost, he takes damage. The ghost's life meter starts at 100, and it drops the entire time it is lit up. If it reaches zero, the ghost loses. Oh, okay, the ghost is attacking one of the humans. When this happens, the human faints, and when you faint, you can't walk around anymore. If all four humans are down at the same time, the ghost wins. Here you see the other players shining their flashlights on the one who fainted. If you do this long enough, the player who fainted will wake up again. You'll have to help your fallen partner to make sure your team doesn't lose. Oh, but as they're shining their lights on the partner, their batteries are running low. As the batteries run low, the power of the flashlight gets weaker until it goes out altogether. Before you lose all power, you'll need to get more batteries. But of course, the ghost will also guess at this and may be lying in wait, so you have to be careful. See, the ghost attacked when they were doing all they could to revive their fallen comrade. You don't pay attention. You often lose track of what's happening around you. But because the remote of the person who fainted still rumbles when the ghost approaches, they have to tell the players around them to watch out and help in their own revival. Oh, here the players have surrounded the ghost in the hallway. It's difficult to escape from this unharmed, so you have to prepare for the damage. And as the ghost race to get away. What do you think? I think now you understand a little better what kind of attraction Luigi's Ghost Mansion is. But seeing is different than playing. So, I'm sure it will, be, it will feel quite different, so please try it out on the show floor. I love visiting theme parks together with my family and friends. Maybe you do too. While there are many of them around the world, the only one featuring Nintendo characters is Nintendo Land. Before we leave, please take one more look.
I'm happy to announce that in this theme park, there's no waiting. Nintendo Land will launch at the same time as the Wii U hardware this holiday. Just as with Wii, start playing Nintendo Land and you start understanding Wii U. Those of you on site here in LA have an advantage. You can walk right over to the convention center today and play for yourself. Unfortunately, those tuning in don't have that opportunity, so we've prepared the next best thing. The minute we're done on stage here today, coming up momentarily, you'll be able to dive deeper into the world of Nintendo Land. And also, we fit you and Batman Arkham City Armored Edition and Zombie U. It's all part of Nintendo All Access at E3, available at e3.nintendo.com and via Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So even remotely, you'll be able to get a better sense of the Wii U gamepad and see its integrated second screen in action. And when you do, you'll realize that there's nothing else quite like it. If you imagine Wii U as a Wii universe, then that small touchscreen in your hands is the portal that transports you to places you've never been before. It's the tool of together. Games played out on a big screen and small screen together. Families in the same room, today distracted by their personal devices, will soon be enjoying time truly together. And friends interacting online with games providing a new social link will feel more together. In a world with more obligations and less time, with technologies that push us away from the personal contact we desire, the promise of Wii U is simple. Together, better. And with that, thank you. We hope E3 is great for you, whether you're heading over to the show floor or you're staying with us right now online for an in-depth look at five great Wii U experiences. Thanks again, and let's finish with one more walk through the theme park that is Nintendo Land. Enjoy. <laughs>